So I was interested in using these server rack style lithium iron phosphate batteries for our daughter's bus conversion. Uh, I reached out to this company and, and they sent me one to, to test out. So this is kind of a review, but I haven't had it long enough to really do a review of it. But it's really just more of a get you some information on this type of product and what is available. They save so much space over regular batteries. They're so much neater in a configuration. They let you have the higher uh, voltage, which I think is better. You got you know, smaller wires and stuff like that. But uh, I'm just gonna go through here and show you this, how we have it set up and what we're planning on doing with it in the future. And again, I, I had, they sent me this to test it out. I didn't actually buy it, so I wanna be upfront with that. But I am looking to purchase more of these in the future. Uh, that was my initial plan. I could, you know, add one here and one there to be able to build a better system as time goes. So uh, this will just give you some information on this product. So this is the Renodo, uh 48 volt, 100 amp hour. It's a server rack style battery. So it's um, lithium iron phosphate and Size-wise comparison to like Battleborns, it's equal to four Battleborns basically, uh, energy output-wise. Um, kind of a smaller, easier case though if you put in a server rack. I don't have a server rack here, so I just have it sitting on the floor. We've been testing it out. This is what I was wanting to do in our daughter's bus for their batteries. Um, get several of these in there. Um, it's like five kilowatt hours of power, and I have that currently tied into a separate inverter here in our solar room. Um, it links into this one, which is 6,000 watts, uh, and giving this storage here. Uh, it's not enough to, it's enough to run refrigerators and all that kind of stuff, but when we start getting into air conditioning and heating and stuff like that, it's not one isn't going to be enough for that. Um, but that's how I wanted to test it out. Originally I thought, well, I'm going to just, you know, they can buy them one at a time and kind of stack and, and, you know, as they need more power save some money, you know, buy one, buy another in the future kind of thing. Uh, output wise, it's great amperage. Um, it's, it's a lot like our other lithium ion batteries. I've not had any uh, issues that have come up as far as I'm getting, you know, approximately the storage that it is out of there. I, I don't, I haven't been taking it down to zero, so I don't know a hundred percent, but I've had it down to, you know, 20 percent. Um, charges up, holds power fast, just like, you know, that a regular lithium ion batteries do. Uh, but I'll go through the, the specs on it and stuff like that, but just, you know, it's it's a great server rack style. I don't have a server rack yet because I didn't want to buy that until I knew I liked this style of battery. Um, but I think that'll be a nice install in a bus um, where it can be, you know, it'll be hooked down. Um, they don't take up a ton of room and they can stack in a, in a server rack. So uh, three, three or four of those will be a, a lot of battery power to have. So here's some of the specifications on this. It is 48 volt, like I said, 100 amp hours. Has a BMS built into it. Measurement wise, it's about 17 inches by 18 inches by seven inches, roughly there. Uh, it is made to mount in a server rack. I don't have that rack yet because I wanted to make sure I like this style of battery before I made that investment. Um, but I think it's gonna stack away nice and it'll be a good usage of that. The, it's a lithium iron phosphate battery, so a lot of the same things about my other batteries pertain to this, but there are a few things that are a little bit different. Number one, the charging voltage on this is a little different than what I'm used to on my other batteries too. Uh, but just kind of going through the spec sheet here, just quickly, if it's something you're interested in. Um, 4,800 watt hours, it is 48 volts. Recommended charge current is 20 amps. The charge voltage is only 54 volts, plus or minus 0.75 volt, which would bring it to 55, which is definitely lower than what we charge our other ones at here. Uh, that's probably why they don't recommend connecting them together with other brands of batteries because their voltage is a little bit different. Um, we've been getting you know, the recommended storage out of it. I, so I haven't drained it all the way to zero, but it's been working flawlessly like our other batteries. I just can't tie things together the way I wanted to. Um, without risking, you know, some kind of an issue because the voltages are a little bit different. If you if you have lead acid batteries and you're going to lithium, I mean, anything lithium is going to be better for you. Uh, they're they're so much superior. But there's certain rules you got to you know follow. You can't you know you got to watch your temperatures. You can't freeze them and still charge them. But usually the BMS and the batteries are going to take care of all that kind of stuff. Um, here's some of the other specs for you. Uh, 54 volts is pretty much so everything there. The disconnect at 56.25 is kind of interesting because we don't even charge our other ones until we get to 57.
uh, the capacity voltage is here to, so you know kind of what it's at. Totally different numbers than you get with the lead acid batteries, that's for sure. So 100% is 50 volts. Uh, our other stuff, you know, we're looking like almost 50, 52, 54. I think they rest at 54. <laughs> Super easy to daisy chain them together. They don't recommend, you know, going to doubling the voltage on. So keep them at 48 volts. You pretty much so want to follow the manufacturer's instructions when you're spending this much money for a battery, that's for sure too. So we just have multiple solar panels that are charging it and it's going right into that inverter. We can run anything off of it in the bus, the 30 amp service on the bus is supplied by that. Um, it's just how long will it run off of just one battery? Not very long, uh, you know, five kilowatt hours. You, if your air conditioning pulls, you know, a thousand watts, you could technically run it for five hours in a perfect world, but you're never gonna get the full amount. So probably plan on about four hours by the time you have the conversion loss from going DC to AC, uh, you know, the inefficiency of your inverter and so on. But if you've not looked at this kind of battery, it's kind of interesting the fact that it can, you know, they can mount together in a server rack style. Um, again, the thing that's concerned me here is that, you know, they don't recommend you connect it to other brands, even though they're all lithium iron phosphate and they're all, um, you know, the same voltage, they don't recommend that you do that. And it could be a big, a big issue with your warranty. Uh, none of the batteries are probably gonna last as long if you do that. These are the 10 solar panels that we have charging that right now. These are all gonna eventually go up on, if I can get them all up there, I might only get eight of them, but that's what's gonna go on the bus uh, and then supply the solar power that's gonna go to the Rodoto batteries that are gonna go in there. So if you are looking for a server rack style battery, this is something you might wanna consider. Take a look at their uh, website, check out some reviews on their products. Um, their website's listed here. I'll put a link in the description to something you can check out uh, that'll get you to them. But uh, server rack batteries seem to be an economical way to get into the lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries. And it's, an, it's a nice storage medium for them. They're not huge in their cases. Uh, they're pretty portable. They're easy to carry around. You don't have a whole lot of wires. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple stuff.